Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will react to the top 10 songs you didn't know were covers. Chanel Connors the thumbnail, it's 40 minutes long, so um, I don't have a lot of time. A 20 second ad with uh, its buffering, so I can't really pause this video because I only have 20 minutes of recording time, so let's just get on with it. Soft Cell Tain and Love. Yeah, it's actually a cover. Uh, Days of Confused by Led Zeppelin, I believe is a cover. Yeah, there you go. Tainted Love, yeah, it's a great song. I do prefer the soft cell version. We're counting down our list for the top 10 songs that you didn't know were covers. Oh, fuck this. I mean, even the original sucks. I mean, how, how do you not know that that's a fucking cover? I mean, Joan Jett is an aspiring as hell. Oh, I did not know that, the uh, Beyoncé song. Dolly Part, now I'll always love you, yeah. I did know that though. That's a cover. Uh, yeah, get on with it, please. Dolly Part is boring as fuck. No. Jack Buckley one's way more popular and better for the matter. There you go. <laughs> Chanel Color, originally by Prince. Number 10. Nothing compares to you. Or the Prince Chanel Band. Are. Originally by the family. Which has Prince in it. This song dazzles and wows us with its hypnotic melody and powerful vocals of Sinead O'Connor. Unknown to most though, this early night... It's kind of like a zit on her cheek. Of a song or do you call her chin? A side project of pop superstar no offense, Lily. Yeah, I do prefer the Sinead version, it's a bit more expressive and powerful. The of the track was never released as a single and received almost no attention at the time of its release. Prince's God to adapt the song into some of his solo performances due to the popularity of the tune later on. It's kind of whiny though. But I'm growing to like it. Oh, uh, how's this woman called again? I'm really bad at now. Me and Bobby McGee, Janis Joplin. Originally by Roger Miller. Yeah, uh, personally, um, I was never really intrigued by. Um, I forgot her name already, so. I never was intrigued by Janis Joplin's uh, songwriting or her music output. I was never really impressed by it. It's country rock, so yeah. I'm not a huge fan of her like raspy vocals either. It you know, doesn't complement the music very well, I think. It's kind of like Southern Rock Country Rock, I'm not a huge fan of it. But it's okay, I guess. She tapped into the source itself with the original Roger Miller tune. Miller's song was also covered by one of the writers of the track, Chris Christopherson. Christopherson. That's a bitchy name to say. Joplin's is undoubtedly more popularly remembered thanks to its upbeat tempo and beefed up. Numbers. Yeah, I mean, having a name like Chris Christopherson doesn't help either, so. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I do like this piano bar right here, but I'm not a huge fan of her vocals. Number eight. Oh, yeah, yeah Led Zeppelin. Days are confused. Dazed and confused. Led Zeppelin. Originally by Jake Holmes. Oh, this version sounds interesting too, but of course Led Zeppelin rips off everything, so there you go. Not only be one of the best, rock bands best cover band ever. But also a game changer in the birth of hard rock. Oh, I love that like violin part, he <laughs> just throws it away, nice. That's why we were more than a little surprised that one of their biggest hits, Days and Confused, is not an original tune. I mean, it's Led Zeppelin, what do you expect? Come on. Just a few years earlier, the folk rock singer released the track, but the song's most widely remembered for Robert Plant's ear blasting vocals, and yep. that addictive guitar riff laid down by Jimmy Page. I mean, this version is good with color and shit, but like the gray version with like, I believe on DVD 2004, originally in 1969, that's like the best version ever. 
That's amazing. Yeah, Beyonce. I did not notice. Number seven. If I were a boy, Beyonce. Originally by BC Jean. If I were a boy. But of course, Beyonce didn't write it. I didn't know that. Sasha Fierce's power ballad is a powerful number that draws attention. I do, yeah, I do prefer the Beyonce version though. Better vocals. She has a nice voice though, I do like her. But I just hate like the the beehives or yeah the yeah let's 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 just, let's just go with that the beehives. I just hate the beehive fan base of Beyonce. They're like praising her to oh she's a goddess. She has a good voice though, but she's not like the best artist ever. I mean fuck off. Is she flipping on the session players? Fuck that bitch. What the fuck? She's like flipping off her engineers. Like they're literally helping you having a career and you're just flipping them off. Fuck you too, bitch. Bobby McGee or something. That's like that guy from Janet Joplin. Bobby McGee. I'm just going off about nothing now. This is a good Beyonce tune though, the live one. Oh yeah, Stevie Wonder, Superstition. Superstitious. Number six, Superstition. I first said it right, then I fucked it up. Fucking hell. Originally by Jeff Beck. I did not know that. I'm not a huge Stevie this Wonder fan, by the way. I do like him, but... Stevie Wonder did originally write this song, but it was Jeff Beck who made the original recording. I hate that one song, which I believe he had in the 80s, which he's li just literally saying, I just came to say I love you. I hate that song. Terrible Steve Wong song. But I do like Superstition though, classic. Kind of like uh, the bass, no, I was like the Beethoven of modern music. Modern. But Beethoven was I believe deaf. Yeah, not blind, so there you go. I'm confusing different shit right now. Different uh, senses. My video is buffery, buffery as shit right now. Is that a word, buffery? I'm buffering as shit right now. Boop -dee -boop -dee -boop -dee. Bebop, doo wop song. Yeah, next one. I cannot watch this video. Uh, Tainted Love, Soft Cell. Tainted Love, Soft Cell. Originally by Gloria Jones. The Soft Cell version is so much better. I mean, go on. Everyone knows that Marilyn Manson is not the original artist behind the What the fuck? Of course, he covers this. Fucking hell. His entire career is a cover song, I mean, come on uh. Of course he covers this song. I didn't even know that there was a Marilyn Manson cover out there, Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Yeah, it was shit from the get-go, but it sounded great. I get what you're saying. It was shit, but it sounded great. Hmm. Sure. It was meant to be covered, exactly. No. <laughs> this is so pathetic. I thought, oh, uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, Cyrus has like one hit song under his name, like big hits. The air brick, my ick brick heart. Like, it's one of my least favorite songs ever. Fuck the Cyrus family. Fuck all those blokes. Fuck Miley. Fuck Billy. Fuck all those fucking people. I mean, Billy Ray Cyrus is more popular now than Miley Cyrus because it's a fucking old Tom Rose song. Like, 
It's so fucking terrible and people like it. I mean, what is wrong with people? Oh, it's unique, it's special. And you're fucking retarded. I mean, and the, this only goes to show that Billy Ray Cyrus is like the most uninspired bloke on the planet because even his like one hit wonder song is literally just a cover of the Marcy band, I believe. It's pathetic. I thought, oh, you know, he probably could have written this because it sounds retarded, but he didn't even write this song. It's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. Classic in Billy Ray Cyrus' stable of contemporary pop country songs. Classic. Well, fuck off. It's one of the worst songs ever. Breaking Apart just makes you want to grind your cowboy boots on the dance floor at your nearest hoedown. I want to shoot up a fucking school whenever I hear the song. There you go. My Erica Brooker horror. I hate that voice. I hate the generic background noise and shit. I hate the guitars, I hate the production, I hate Billy Ray Cyrus, I hate the fucking Cyrus family. Fuck those people. Was originally performed by the Marcy Brothers. Fuck Billy Ray Cyrus and his fucking retarded daughter. Of course those retarded genes, you know, spread, so there you go. With old Billy putting his stab to his recording. I mean it literally sounds the same. Are you fucking kidding me? I wanna punch Billy Ray Sars in every painful place he, he has. And you know which place I'm referring to. Fuck Billy Ray. Fuck that bloke. I get so mad from bad songs, man. I really do. That's probably why people love it so much. Number three. I will always love you. Whitney Houston. Originally by Dolly Parton. They love to see those videos because, you know, I get enraged by them. Fuck Billy Ray. This song is so strongly tied to Houston's career that hearing it immediately brings back images of her belting out this powerful number thanks in no small part to her performing it for the film she starred in, The Bodyguard. And yeah, there we go again. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Yep, yeah, it's a song. And that says something considering the experience. I haven't heard it in like a year and I'm already tired of it. The song was originally performed by this part specifically. It's so half baked on the Dolly Parton version. Although kudos goes out for the song. It does sound that bad though, but it's kind of underwhelming compared to this one. Yeah, I can not hit that note. I do like that note though. Oh no Joan Jazz, no. I mean, I like it musically because you have that burden. I do like that part, but whenever she comes in, yeah, with me, yeah, me, yeah, I hate her vocals. I just can't stand her fucking vocals. Joan Jet and the Blackhearts, originally by the Air. I hate that ow, the death part. I hate that the most. I mean, it's just generic. Rock and roll songwriting, it's so entry level, it's so basic. I just hate songwriting like this. I almost want to like uh, shoot up the Watch Mojo studio for just saying that. Oh, that was terrible. It's not meant to sound sexy, it's meant to sound raw and heavy and rock and roll. And Britney going like, Ew. it's kind of like you're making a rock and roll song sexual. What the fuck are you doing? The Black Hearts is a rock classic and is enough. Britney is doing everything wrong. I mean, come on. I mean, at least the Joan Jett version kind of rocks though. I do like the rock and roll mentality that the song has, but at the same time, I hate it too because it's so generic. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, you literally just mentioned that, but sure. I hate that lyric too. Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. I fucking hate that lyric. Still 
singing that same old song. Exactly. I mean, even the day notes, fucking crap. I, mean, I knew that was a fucking poor. I mean, come on. Oh, Patsy Klein. Uh, crazy. Originally by Willie Nelson, same year. Nice. Well, yeah, the Willie Nelson version goes on forever. Patsy Klein has kind of been behind it. Don't turn around, Ace of Base, originally by Tina Turner. I hate Ace of Base. I kind of dislike Tina Turner too, so there you go. I can't read this because my whole, my whole fucking video is freezing right now. Hard to Handle by the Black Crows, originally by Otis Redding. Uh, eh. Oh, what the fuck? Mambo number no. 5, a little bit of Lou Bega, originally by Damaso Perez Prado. Oh, that's why I, I kind of like a little bit of, but Needle Drop hates it because it's kind of like um, a sexist kind of like. I like a little bit of this woman and I like a little bit of that one. It's kind of like scooping some ice flavors and shit like that. I like uh, like comparing f flavors to women, which is kind of tasteless in a way, ironically. So there you go. Mama number five. It actually got asked by me, uh, what do I think of like some people around here, what taste they are, and that's really hard to describe, I think. I mean, it was... Half a century out before the low Bega version came around, so yeah. Oh, I was kind of like, oh, usually it sounds pretty good, but there's vocals and the lyrics are pretty bad, so there you go. Natalia Imbruglia, originally by, or torn by Natalia Imbruglia, originally by Ethnos. Wow, terrible name. I hate this song. Oh, this actually sounds pretty good. Sounds more alternative in a way, alternative rock. Now, of course, everyone knows this is a fucking cover. I mean, come on. I mean, of course I know that, but Robert Hazard does. It's not a girl, so. I mean, you gotta need a girl to, you know, to have that kind of like. You know, that girl anthem. It makes more sense to be sung by a girl. So this cover was meant to be. I mean, I do like it though, but I'm not a huge fan of like... It's kind of a sexist song in a way, the cover at least. It's just like a girl's anthem. Okay. Punk tune? What the fuck? Pop tune, right? Starkly different from Lopper's more popular version. This punk tune was the inspiration for the melody. Punk? Punk tune? Punk tune. What the fuck? Cindy Lopper's Girls Who Wanna Have Fun is a punk song. Okay. There's like a construction worker, like. I back off. And we're like walking down the staircase. Yeah. For more top tens about your favorite music, subscribe to watchmojo.com. I do like that keyboard synth bass shit. I do like that. Um, yeah, that was a good list. Yeah, I think I have more. Uh, I have more time. Minute, I believe. So there you go. Uh, oh well, I can't read anything because my computer's slow as shit right now. So, I uh, guess I'll end it there. Um, after this, I will do the overuse covers, but I first have to import this video because um, I have no room anymore left. So, there you go. Um, is it really a cover if you co wrote the original? Um, I don't know. I guess it is. So, there you go. Um, yeah, so there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you would, uh, or songs you didn't know were covers, but actually are. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I actually knew a lot of these songs were covers, so there you go. 
I kind of forgot the Led Zeppelin one because it it sounds so original to them, but you know also a whole lot of love in a way, and that's a fucking ripple song. So there you go. Yeah. 